So you know how I said we weren't going to look at new hardware, we weren't going to do unboxing, and we weren't going to do live streaming. And uh, now we've done all of that, we're just going to keep going with some more new hardware and maybe some unboxing. Yeah. So we're doing a new build because the option came up cheap to do it, and well, why not? Um, we're doing a mix of secondhand and new parts. So to start off with, the base, the case, Corsair Carbide Air 240. This is one of only two cases that I have ever liked enough to buy twice in my life. Uh, the first one was the Antec Sonata 2, and I still have both of those out the back here, I'm pretty sure. They're a little bit worse for wear now, but uh, I still like them, they still look good. Um, probably not as good fan placement and airflow as modern cases, but they still look neat. Um, Anyway, so I have one here, and if you've ever been down to the workshop here, there is one over on the front counter over there. Uh, if you'd been here a few months ago, this was actually my computer. Um, there's nothing in it right now, like no hardware, like no computer hardware in it right now, but that will change shortly. So to go in that, obviously this is secondhand. On the new side of things, we have Samsung 250 gig 960 Evo NVMe M.2 drive. I never know what order to say that stuff in. This is not the same one as previously, the one with the warranty claim. This was a new one, like I've used the other one now. I liked it so much and was so impressed with it that I decided let's get another one because they are just that good. Um, by comparison, I have an Intel 600P 256 NVMe SSD in my other machine, the one that this is about to replace. And uh, this thing is like chalk and cheese, like miles ahead of it. Along with that, also secondhand, well, not really secondhand. Technically, I bought this one new, but it's been in the system that this is replacing the old system. It's been in that. We have T-Force DDR4 Gaming Nighthawk RGB RAM. This is DDR4 3200. Um, and apparently looking into it, Samsung chips, which is nice. So yes, RGB. Uh, I'm not a particular fan of RGB, but this stuff was cheap enough. That totally didn't work. Also secondhand, Gigabyte, four gig AMD Radeon RX 570. Next mining card that I picked up really cheap. Well, I thought it was really cheap anyway. Price is probably gonna come down, especially with the release of the GeForce RTX. That's right, I said RTX. Ooh, new. We're not touching that. But then again, I said no unboxing, no live streaming, and who knows what else. So, you know, maybe we will. This case will only take a micro ATX board at the largest, so for the motherboard, Asus Prime B350M-A. Micro ATX board has all of the stuff that I wanted it to have, which was really just four RAM slots and an M.2 slot so that we can use the SSD, so we're good. Has some USB 3 and 3.1 ports, but no USB Type-C. But mind you, I have no USB Type-C to Type-C cables anyway. I have one USB 3 to Type-C cable for my phone to charge, and that's about it. So, not really missing out on much there. And again, it's cheap. It will do what I want it to do. Uh, it will allow us to do a little bit of overclocking from what I understand if I want to, but I haven't overclocked anything for a little while. So, probably won't matter all that much. So for those who know your chipsets or just read it on the box, that means if we've got a B350 chipset, that means we're going Ryzen, Ryzen to the occasion. Ha, ah, get it? Dad joke. It's okay, I'm loud. So this one is a Ryzen 7 1700. Uh, comes in the box with a cooler, which apparently is RGB as well, which I don't know how I feel about that yet. I'm not really a fan of RGB, but we'll see what we can do with that. Time to get building. I'm not gonna time it this time. It's just gonna happen when it happens. Um, hopefully sooner rather than later. But yeah, see how we go. Wish me luck. Motherboard first. There's not a lot in this, hey. There is the motherboard itself. Two SATA cables, one's right angled. There is a manual. There is a backing plate or IO plate, whatever you wanna call that. Screw and a, it's not a nut the base for the nut, for the M2 drive, I would imagine. So we don't really need a lot out of that. So that can sit over there for now, out of the way. Try not to drop that. 
which is easier said than done, it seems. It's actually quite a long board. Like, back to front ways, it seems quite long. Maybe it's because of micro ATX and they had to fit everything on there. Let's start with the exciting part. Let's start with the CPU. Mini knife, possibly a nail clipper, who knows. Oh, this says socket AM4, discrete graphics required. Good thing we have one of those. So that would be the CPU itself. Focus. Oh good, it has some kind of thermal application, paste, compound, whatever. On the bottom already, ah yes, RGB control cable, my favorite. Unlike the Intel, this is still pin based, which is better than bending pins on the motherboard. Still nerve wracking as anything though. It looks like it goes in. Seems to be in. Which makes absolutely no sense and does my head in because look, the writing goes up and down, not left and right. Yeah, but no one's going to see it once it's in the machine. Unless you're watching this. <coughs> Time to mount the cooler. I don't know why that requires sleeves up. I think it's just getting hot. You're kidding. So the orientation of the cooler doesn't even let me put the writing the right way up. But I think I'm gonna go the other way just because all the writing on the board seems to be facing up that way and the AMD on this can face up that way as well. And it'll give us a little bit more clearance around the RAM. That's the theory anyway. There is actually quite a lot of clamping force in that. Probably should have plugged that in before I bolted it down, hey. What a doofus. The RGB control is actually a plug in the side, not underneath. So I just pulled the cooler off for nothing and then put it back on. What a doofus. It's great, it's fine, it's probably fine. You can neaten up some cables and then plug in everything else that goes on the motherboard. And then before we mount it in the case, probably stop for lunch. But you don't need to know that and this will probably hit the cutting room floor anyway, so. Whatever. SSD. All right, so the little mount for the SSD screw goes in first. The SSD itself goes in. Yes, I did repackage the RAM just to open it again on camera. DIM A1, DIM A2, DIM B1, DIM B2. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, B1? I think I am B2. It's RAM time. Would you look at that? Funnily enough though, we're not using RAM slots B1 and B2. We're using A1 and A2 first. So the motherboard side of things is done. CPU's installed, cooler's installed, the NVMe SSD's installed, and the RAM's installed. So next, it goes into the case. We'll be back after a short break and messages from these sponsors. We don't actually have sponsors. I'm just gonna stop for lunch. So, we'll move this out of the way first, now that it is ready to go. We'll get the case up. And time to start getting it ready. It's not really a great shot, is it? Okay, we're gonna have to remount some fans by the look of it. We've got plenty of space to work with. So, let's get to work. I'm 
the locker. Ta-da. Ta-da. All right, now we've got to hook everything up. So we've got to put the fans in the front too, and then put a power supply in, and video card, and you'll see it at the end. And we're back several hours later. The build is finished, um, and on top of that, the desk is now clean. Like, new computer, might as well clean up everything, so I just spent a couple of hours doing that. Time to power it up. Like, I know, I realize you're looking at the back, but the back shows there's something in it, as opposed to the front, which would have looked exactly the same whether there was something in it or not. So, there you go. Let's go give it a try. I'm gonna take this. Look at that. And we're gonna go plug it in over here on the nice clean-ish desk. It's all plugged in. Here we go. Got some lights. Ooh. Got a lot of lights. Look. I think we'll call that a success. That was nerve wracking. Anyway, so I will install an OS and report back with some results. Bye. <laughs> Okay, so last I said I was going to install an OS and then report back on how it goes. Uh, it's going well. It's actually been about two weeks of going well so far. A um, few little hiccups with the build. <sighs> so we've got these terrible red lines across the screen first, which totally freaked me out. Turns out it just wasn't plugged in properly. That's fine. It's probably fine. It's working now. It's good. It's fine. Um, and. The backing plate or IO plate, IO shield, whatever you want to call it, um, has these little tabs and turns out the tabs for the top USB ports got caught in the USB ports when I was putting it in. I had to undo everything, undo the motherboard slightly, move it back like that far just to be able to bend those tabs up and put it back in. Yeah, got to be more careful with that one in the future, but didn't damage anything. It's all up and running never actually had that one happen before so that was interesting anyway this won't make a difference to you out there watching the finished product but i've actually edited the video so far up until me sitting down and talking about it now on the machine to see how it goes um i did try enabling i think on intel it's called xmp and on amd systems or at least on this one it seems to be called docc which is your uh, RAM profiles. I'm not gonna get into the technical details, but it's a performance increase of some kind. That resulted in a lot of instability, so I've turned that off and everything is fine again. I don't know if that's to do with the motherboard, the RAM, the CPU, or just a bad combination of all. I'm guessing maybe it just pushes it too far because it's working fine without it. On top of just getting the system up and running though, I have done a ton of benchmarking which was really weird because it turns out the rest of the tech world was doing a bunch of benchmarking around the release of the GeForce RTX as well. I didn't have a GeForce RTX, I have no plans to get a GeForce RTX, but for some reason I ended up doing benchmarking around the same time anyway. 
obviously not as quick with releasing the results because they're not even in this video. They'll be in the next one. But anyway, that was interesting too. So I made mention of my previous system, which is what the benchmarks were against. I haven't actually said what the previous system is yet, but that's it there. That black and white thing on the desk, that's the previous system. If you like what you saw, or even if you didn't, you know, show us your thumbs. Actually, you know what? We had our first dislike on a video. So don't show us your thumbs. If you liked it, show us your thumb. If you didn't like it, don't just give us the thumb. Give us some constructive criticism. What didn't you like? What could we improve? What could we do better next time? If you want to see more, subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you will get notifications every time that we release a new video. If you want to follow along on social media, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. On top of that, Mrs. Scrapyard Techie and I do retro gaming live streams every second Saturday night at 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. You can find us on Twitch under Scrapyard Techie. We'll have results of the benchmarks next time against that, whatever that is. If you want to see more, you're going to have to subscribe. Thanks. Bye.